Hey, what's up? This is Joe again, and today I want to take a look at two soundbars by Vizio. All right, so soundbars. Ah, soundbars. I used to hate on soundbars, I'll be honest. I was kind of like one of those audiophile type people who would like look at a soundbar and be like, ugh, you guys have a soundbar? You know, I think that's how a lot of audiophiles feel about soundbars right now. And it's just because, you know, traditional thinking says that bigger speakers, like at least bookshelf size, right? Uh, at least bookshelf size will give you better sound. And I don't think that that is untrue. You will get better sound with bigger speakers. It's just physics. But are sound bars that bad for most people? We're going to find out right now. So first of all, who buys sound bars and why would they want to buy one? Um, I think the main thing is that TV speakers on these very thin TVs that people have nowadays, they're pretty bad. I mean, it's, it's hard to even make things out, especially if you have a larger room. Those speakers in there are tiny to make the TV thinner. I'm thinking about it and I'm like, hmm, you know, people usually hate on people with sound bars, but you know, they still sell. So you can't argue about that. Uh, people are buying them up. Why are they buying them up? Well, people don't want normal speakers. They don't want these big speakers. They bought a flat TV and real thin profile because they want it to look minimalistic and they want it to look clean. They want to uh, not have any wires. And speakers tend to have wires. They tend to ha take up some visual space. And um, for me, I like the way the speakers look. I've said that in previous videos, but some people don't. Some people have kids where, you know, they don't want them to poke out the tweeters. And so a soundbar is appropriate in that situation. Another reason is that soundbars are really inexpensive nowadays. I went out and I bought two Vizio soundbars. I think one of them was around 100 bucks. The other one was around $130. I don't know what you can really get as far as like good legitimate speakers that are self-powered with a remote, with capabilities for Bluetooth, all of the above. Uh, for that price range. I'm sure people out there are gonna say, well, you can get you know, these bookshelf speakers, you can get this separate amplifier that has a remote, but if you add it all up, it's gonna be more expensive. And it's not gonna be the same form factor. It's gonna take up more space and there are, it, they are more complex. There are more wires to hook up. So a soundbar is meant to be simple. I went out and bought these two. I wanted to try them out for myself to see what the actual experience is with the sound bar, what the sound quality was like, what the setup process was like, you know, how normal people would experience this. And keep in mind, I'm coming at this from more of an audiophile perspective. I prefer really good sound over the way it looks, although the way it looks is important to me as well. So I'm gonna be looking at two different sound bars from Vizio. One of them is your typical sound bar and a separate subwoofer. And the second one is kind of an all-in-one system where it has the speakers and it also has two, I guess you can call them subwoofers. I would say they're more woofers because they don't go extremely low, but they're all in one unit. No need for a separate sub on that system. So I took them to my house where I typically have a setup with ELAC speakers in the front, the Unify UB5s and the UC5 center channel. For the rears, I have the Pioneer BS22 LRs. And for the ceiling speakers for the Atmos setup, I am using the Mica Kovo S's. For a sub, it's a sub that I custom built using a Dayton Audio eight inch uh, woofer. It's a sealed enclosure and I'm using a 300 watt amplifier on that. For my audio video receiver, I'm using a Denon X4100, which I love. I'm also using a BenQ HT2050 projector and a silver ticket screen. That's my home theater setup and that's where I'm gonna be using these sound bars. All right, so first thing I need to say is that the setup on these is pretty easy. I think it's designed for somebody who has their TV right next to their sound bar. In my case, my projector is way in the back. And so it's a little bit different the way I had to set it up. These sound bars did not have an HDMI input or pass through where you plug in your HDMI to it and then the HDMI goes out to your TV. And so because my projector was so far away, I didn't have an optical cable or a uh, 3.5 millimeter line out cable to uh, connect to my projector. My sources, I don't have cable, so I use an Amazon Fire TV and a Chromecast, both of which do not have optical out. So my typical setup is that I have those things hooked up to my receiver and my receiver will receive the audio and video will be sent to my projector using HDMI. Now with these, that wouldn't work. So what I had to do was something that's I wouldn't recommend, which is hooking these sound bars up via Bluetooth 
to the Amazon Fire because that supports Bluetooth. That's not the ideal way to set it up, but it's the way that I had to do it. This wouldn't be an issue for most people because like I said, if your TV is right above the soundbar, then you can easily connect an optical cable coming out from the TV to the soundbar below it. Or if you don't have optical out, you can use the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack output to the back of the sound bars. The main problem with Bluetooth is that there are gonna be some lip sync issues. There's gonna be a delay between what you see on the screen and what you hear from the speakers. And that's just a Bluetooth thing. Uh, there are speakers where the latency is a lot less where you can't really tell, but I'm very sensitive to that and I like everything to be perfectly in sync. Not that in sync. The first soundbar I tried out was the one that does not require a subwoofer where the woofers are built into the actual soundbar itself. And um, I wasn't extremely impressed. I did some mic measurements with my calibrated mic and I did find that the re frequency response was relatively flat. And so I was impressed by that. But I felt like it didn't really get loud enough, but the overall tonality was good. Meaning that if you're listening to the music on it, it's gonna sound right. You know, the bass is not gonna be too bassy, the treble's not gonna be too high, the mid-range, everything is just right. Uh, the problem for me is that it didn't really project the sound well enough for me. In this size room, it's not a really big room, but for me, it just seemed like, seemed like a small speaker, right? Which it is. You can only expect so much from a speaker this size. But for the size, I guess, I was somewhat impressed by the overall tonality. It does have some bass, but it doesn't really hit that real low bass that you'd expect from bigger speakers. For movies, uh, you can't really expect to have that rumbling low bass. That's not gonna do that. But maybe for watching TV, I think it'll be fine for stuff like that. It'll definitely be better than your TV speakers. You know, you're gonna hear dialogue clearer and you will hear some low frequencies and the high frequencies will be a little bit clearer. For music, it'll be better than watching on TV for sure. It does have its limitations. On the second bar I tried out, it is a 2.1 setup. So it has a sound bar and then it has a separate sub that you put in the corner of the room, wherever. And the first thing I notice is the bass is ridiculous on this thing. I mean, like, I'm actually pretty surprised how much bass this small enclosure produces. The way that they have it calibrated though, if you look at the measurements that I did, the bass is extremely, extremely turned up. It's just really overbearing if you're used to a flat sound signature. Now, a lot of people will get this sound bar, they're gonna hear the bass and they're gonna be amazed. They're not used to hearing that type of bass and I get it. People who aren't used to that are gonna be really impressed with hearing that low rumble and really feeling it shake. I mean, this thing, I tested it out here at the shop and it was rattling all kinds of things at different frequency ranges. It was just like, I was doing some sweep tests and like stuff was just rattling and all over the place. So it does get loud. It gets impressively loud actually. Um, it's just for me, when it comes to the actual tonality, uh, uh, it's good for movies. You know, the voices come out nice and clear for TV. I'm sure that uh, it's gonna help make the dialogue come out a little bit clearer. But as far as playing music on this, like stuff that I'm used to listening to, the bass was just overwhelming. You have the ability to turn it down, but still even all the way turned down, the bass is still a little bit too much for me. Both of these have different options for EQ, so you can mess with that. They have a surround mode, which kind of gives a more wide sound stage, like a different DSP effect where, you know, it does sound wider than it is. It doesn't really feel like surround sound to me, but it's a kind of, it's a cool effect. Um, my wife didn't seem to like it. She said it sounded like we're in a huge bowl. And I get that. It sounds a little bit artificial. So compared to my existing system, these sound bars don't really compare that well. I don't think it's actually a fair comparison either. What I would say is for the price, I don't, I mean, it's, what do you compare it to? They're extremely inexpensive. And so compared to TV speakers, the sound bars are great. You know, for most people, I think sound bars are great. Maybe not great. I think they're good you can get a lot better if you're willing to spend a little bit more, if you're willing to get speakers that take a little bit more space, maybe have a setup where it's modular, where there are more things to hook up, but you can upgrade in the future. You can change out your speakers, you can change out your amplifier. So there are uh, ways that you can upgrade the system as opposed to these, you really have to just get a whole new system if you decide you want better sound. So yeah, if you're interested in these, I will leave a link in the description to these two products. 
if you decide that you want a different system, maybe a better system, uh, I can make some recommendations. Just let me know what you're looking for and I can uh, respond in the comments below. I also have videos where I'm reviewing some other speakers that you could possibly use and different amplifiers that might suit your specific uh, use case. I'm not a soundbar hater. I'm just not a soundbar lover. I think they're good enough. They're not great. If you do have a chance to try out some better speakers, I think that you would be able to tell the difference. So uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And that's it. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.